Hey there, welcome to the final installment of Sigma's four-part series on ML for the business user. My name is Fran, and today we're going to take a look at an example of continuous predictions in Sigma. So what I have up on the screen is an example of the relationship between revenue and customers that exist for our stores. And we can see that there's actually a, a model already fit to that relationship where we can predict how much revenue we would expect based on customers. But what's neat about this is it's actually a model that's governed by my data science team. And so as a business user, for me to invoke this, I just use this predict revenue function right here. And what this is going to allow me to do is put in any customer count and give me a governed output on whatever customer count that I would put in here. And it's always going to be consistent because that model is locked in. It's actually not generated in an ad hoc way in some of the other Sigma tools that we've looked at. So what happens there is that that model and that relationship between the two variables is kind of locked in for continued use for any other kind of analysis. And one great example of that is actually by looking at a filtered set of the data. So in this store table down below, I've actually filtered my data down to Texas and then I've gone ahead and fit a trend line. And so I've gone ahead and clicked trend line and added one for total revenue. And that's what we're seeing in the orange dashed line. And this shows us the relationship of customer count and revenue for Texas, but we still have that purple line of the governed prediction for us to compare against. And so we can see in this chart really clearly that there's actually a different relationship for Texas than for the stores as a whole. And that a higher customer count in Texas actually produces a higher expected revenue than what we would have expected just from the global uh, assortment of stores. And this tells us that on average, Texas earns far more per customer. If we wanted to invoke this prediction feature in something like a data app, we also could see the output of, of this Texas versus global relationship as well. So if I scroll down here, what I've done here is I have this expected customers input table and a prediction function that allows me to actually invoke that predict revenue again. And so what happens is I can change this to be something like 300 customers. And what will happen is our predict revenue function will take in that new input and calculate out a prediction on our global function that we can then compare against the average of stores that fit that profile in Texas. And so we can see that if we were to just throw that store anywhere, we would expect maybe 20 million in revenue versus if we were to throw it in Texas, we might expect something like 32 million.